I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for participating actively and posting their request frequently. I've got many requests from grade 11 students who are appearing for Waterloo Math Contest. So we will today take up few questions from previous test papers. Here is question number 20 from February 2017 test paper of Waterloo. Question is, if m and n are positive integers with n greater than 1 such that m to the power of n equals to 2 to the power of 25 times 3 to the power of 40, then m plus n is what? Five choices are given to you. Sorry for that bad print, but let me rewrite this, right? So what we are given here is that n is greater than 1. We are also given that m to the power of n is 22 to the power of 25 times 3 to the power of 40. And what we need to figure out is what is m plus n equal to, right? So that is the question which is given to us. Let us see how to solve it. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. So we are talking about positive integers. And what we notice here is that when we say that m to the power of n is equal to 2 to the power of 25 times 3 to the power of 40, it means that only 2 and 3 are the prime factors of m. Correct. So that basically implies that only prime factors of m are 2 and 3. Correct. So that means I could always write m as a multiple of 2 and 3. Right. So that basically means that I could write m as 2 to the power of something, let that be, let's say, x, times 3 to the power of something, let's say, y. Okay. Since only 2 and 3 are the prime factors of m. Now, getting back to m to the power of n is 2 to the power of x times 3 to the power of y to the power of n, which you could definitely write as 2 to the power of xn times 3 to the power of y n. Now, we can compare the given equation, which let me call this as equation number 1 and this as our equation number 2. So when you compare these two equations, exponents of 2 are 25, here it is x n, for 3 it is 40 and y n. So that means we get two equations, x n is equal to 25, and we also get yn equals to 40. Got it? So now you notice that we have uh, two equations but three unknowns. Now the, the question here is that we have two equations and three unknowns. So that means you have to do some guess and check or some other uh, conditions you need to figure out to find the three unknowns. So interesting condition here is that we have n as a common factor. Do you see that? So in xn and yn, we have n is common factor of both these terms, right? So let's find the common factor of 25 and 40. That should be n, correct? So n is a common factor of 25 and 40. Perfect. Since x times n is 25 and y times n is 40. So n is a common factor. Perfect. So you know what is the common factor of 25 and 40? Well, we know that the common factor of 25 and 40 is 5. Do you see that? So that is what, and that gives you the value of n, so n is 5 for us. Well, that's not the equation number 5, which I'm writing as circles. Anyway, so we get n as 
5 and now we can solve what is x and what is y correct so we have x as 25 over 5 which is 5 and we have y as 40 over 5 which is 8 so we get the values of x and y perfect now we can actually get our results so what we know from here is that x is equal to 5 y is equal to 8 and n is equal to 1 and m plus n m is 2 to the power of x times 3 to the power of y so we'll calculate what m is now so m is 2 to the power of x times 3 to the power of y we know the value of x and y now x is 5 y is 8 so it is 2 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 8 let's use calculator to figure this out so we have 2 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 8 and that is 209952 perfect so that is the value of m and what is m plus n now m plus n is 209952 plus the value of n which is just 1 uh, sorry which was 5 which is 5 not 1 so we'll add this and get our answer which is 209957 209957 is option c so that becomes the solution right so we have that as our answer so answer is option c so i hope that makes sense so the idea here is to work with the exponents as we have shown here so identifying that these are the only prime numbers and then work on the algebra part we can actually solve this question i hope that makes sense Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.